In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, since the rosary is one of the most important aspects of the Fatima message, it's good to remind ourselves of its great power. Moreover, Sister Lucia, in a 1957 interview, said that Our Lady has given it a new efficacy in our time so that there's no problem, no matter how difficult it is, whether temporal or, above all, spiritual, that cannot be solved by the rosary. The rosary gives us grace, power, and protection. My dear and beloved in Christ, the rosary is a book that teaches a knowledge of Jesus and Mary. It's an effective way to obtain graces from God. It's a stimulus to all the virtues. It's a perfect catechism. One who prays the rosary cannot forget the mysteries of redemption. The rosary is a summary of Catholic doctrine. It has an invincible power to overcome the spirit of the world, the flesh, and the devil. For many, the rosary has been the key to heaven. A young artist, composer, or painter strives for the perfection of his art by studying the works of the masters. So too, if we are to strive for a good and holy life, we must turn to our perfect model, Jesus Christ. The rosary keeps Christ and his mother ever before us. Every lesson necessary for the imitation of Jesus and Mary is exemplified in one or other of the mysteries of the Holy Rosary. Patience, love of neighbor, love of God, the value of suffering, all conceivable virtues are wonderfully set forth to inspire us and to assist us to copy them in our own life. My dear and beloved in Christ, the family rosary provides an easy yet effective means of combating the many evils that beset the home. It gives young people a strong defense against the temptations they face everywhere. The motto of Father Payton's campaign, the family that prays together stays together, echoes the words of the saintly Pope Pius IX, who advised, if you desire peace in your hearts, in your homes, in your country, assemble every evening to recite the rosary. My dear and beloved in Christ, for centuries it has been the custom for Catholic fathers and mothers to kneel each evening with their children and any other members of the household or visitors to recite the rosary together, the family rosary. This was often followed by the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This devout practice brought untold blessings on the home. It's a powerful help in molding the children into true Catholic men and women. And when they leave the parental roof, they do not quickly become prey to false doctrines and bad companions. By good example and careful instruction, they've been imbued with the principles of right living and, not, and do not lightly leave off the practice of their faith. In homes of this kind, many vocations to the priesthood and the religious life blossomed. The decline of vocations today has put the church in sore straits and points to a lack of devout Catholic homes. My dearly beloved in Christ, the daily recitation of the rosary in the home circle is important in teaching the members of the family to turn to God in prayer in the many occasions and circumstances which threaten the peace and security of life. It leads them to see God's hand in all that happens, to think of him reverently, to look up to him trustfully, and to lovingly accept all that he sends or permits. My dearly beloved in Christ, it's very important that we pray the rosary properly. With many people, the saying of the beads seems to be just a mechanical prayer during which the mind, instead of being occupied with heavenly things, is more or less voluntarily distracted. Too often, also, it's rushed and is regarded merely as a means of asking for temporal favors with little thought as on those bearing on our sanctification and salvation. As a result, the recitation of the rosary easily degenerates into a routine. Simply to say the prayers on each bead is not the way the rosary should be prayed. That is why those who merely parrot these prayers find the rosary monotonous and 
full of distractions. They neglect meditation or thought in the mysteries, and without thought in the mysteries, there's no true rosary. No one can really plumb the depths of the mysteries which contain lessons so vitally important in our lives. That's the reason they're called mysteries. But each, but we can derive wonderful inspiration from the example of Jesus and Mary in comprehending how there are similar mysteries in our own life and in seeing how we must act and correspond with God's grace to realize God's plan in our life. The mysteries of the rosary convey the example and inspiration we need in daily life. No one can pray the rosary without some involuntary distractions, but we must try as hard as possible to keep our mind on our prayers and on the mysteries. To pray the rosary well, we must pray with attention. God listens to the voice of the heart more than to the voice of the lips. Deliberately, to pray without attention is irreverent and renders prayers useless and sinful. Father Roger Land wrote, My earliest childhood memories are praying the rosary with my family at the kitchen table. In other words, the family rosary. This family tradition taught me that God was real and part of our daily life. It also taught me how important daily prayer was with others, for others, and mutually strengthened by others like the rosary procession. It deeply nourished my priestly vocation. But that doesn't mean praying it has always been easy. It also doesn't mean that I've always prayed it as well as I would have wished. In college and seminary, I would generally pray it silently as I walked to class. Now I often prayed in the car or walking on the streets of Manhattan. When I prayed at the end of the day, I normally stand or pace to stay awake. Just like any prayer, it sometimes is a battle to fight off distractions or occasional boredom, even as we are contemplating the mysteries of Christ's life. It's worth it, however. As with physical exercise, the effort and the repetition pays off. One may not set a record on any given day at the track or at the gym, but the cumulated impact of exercising every day makes athletic achievements possible later. With the rosary, some days we just get through it as best we can, but that hard work makes it possible to receive deeper fruits of prayer later when the prayer is not so arduous. I found praying the rosary every day to be the greatest day to help me overcome the temptation to pray only when it's convenient. I found praying the rosary every day to be the greatest aid to help me overcome the temptation to pray only when it's convenient. The structure of the rosary, its duration, and its mysteries train us in persevering prayer that serve us in every aspect of the plan of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.